Thank you very much. Um, so yeah, hi everyone, I'm Ollie Clamp, uh, VP of um, Global Monetization Solutions, uh, based out of London, um, but I look after anything outside of the US market, effectively. Um, emphasis right now on Europe and APAC being the two core regions. Um, just very quickly, I'll get the formal bit out of the way and then I won't bore you with any more details. Um, Millennium Media are the largest independent advertising and data um, advertising network um, based in the US, EMEA um, and APAC. Uh, we're currently working with 60,000 apps across the globe and we work with 90 of the top 100 advertisers. So that's that bit out of the way. Um, so key things I want to talk about, which I'll touch on in a minute, is the, the six golden rules of monetization. Um, we kind of had a long think about it and there's so many things going on in the market right now. Advertising industry is evolving probably quicker than anything. Um, so what are the key six that you need to think about if you were developing an app for the first time? Um, you know, what are they? So I'm going to cover those off. But first, whilst advertising is evolving, I think we're all evolving with mobile. I, I don't, if anyone leaves their mobile at home for the day, I think it's almost like leaving without a body part. Like you just can't survive the rest of the day without it. Um, so I'm just going to show you a quick video of how things are evolving with mobile. Um, things that you usually have at home that you probably don't have anymore. Um, just a little 40 second video, um, which hopefully works. Um, just to keep you entertained. As I said, th things are moving pretty quick, and the advertising industry, if, if anything, I think is moving quicker. So, so that brings me to, to why I'm here. Um, the six golden rules to successful monetization. I'm hoping you're going to agree with every single one of these, and if anything doesn't make any sense, please just stick your hand up. I'd be happy to take any questions. So, golden rule number one, market value pricing. Not sure if that means anything to you right now, but what I mean by that is... I think everyone, when they bring out an app for the first time, has their own kind of expectation as to what it's worth when it comes to advertising. You bring out, let's say, a AAA game that just looks absolutely stunning. Just because it looks great, feels great, and is building a strong audience doesn't necessarily mean that it's what an advertiser wants. And just because it looks great doesn't mean that they're going to pay significant higher yield for it because of the look and feel. Advertisers right now are really looking for performance and, and a number of different metrics. So. And there's, there's kind of two things. One, really understand your audience or the audience that you're trying to go after if it's, if it's a new release. To figure out you know, who they are, what they're using, where they're based, and try and build your advertising in around that, whether it's location, um, is it Android, is it tablet, you know, what, what are we really focusing on? And then at the same time, try where you can to understand what the advertiser's looking for in those areas. So, do advertisers buy differently on Android as they do to iOS? Do they buy different on tablet? Is it different ad formats? So a couple of stats here just very quickly that we took from our smart reports um, based on the 60,000 developers we have. It's just collated information. We saw 30% over last year. We're just literally looking to just drive traffic to mobile websites. That's it. And then another 46% really looking for in-market presence and brand awareness. So then what that tells us is that advertisers aren't necessarily just looking for downloads now and just trying to drive apps in the app store. There's a lot more brand revenue coming into the market, but they still want to run across a broad demographic. So they don't want to just target other branded sites. They want to target gaming, whether it's social, whatever it is. So really try and understand what the advertiser is looking for when you're planning your advertising. Um, and then to try and set that market value, I'm going to talk about this as, as another point um, under programmatic, but you need to start looking at an exchange environment. So allow advertisers to actually start coming in and bidding for your traffic so they can actually set that true value to what your infantry is actually worth. And then based on that, you've got a nice baseline guideline from the off as to the revenue you're really going to generate. 
And then you can start adding little tweaks to it as you go along to increase that revenue. Then golden rule number two, where are the dollars for you? So again, I just mentioned it earlier about trying to identify um, specific areas where the money actually sits. And I think the, the key area here is probably location and geographic. So I'll touch on this here. This is, again, some more data we took based on where applications are based and developers are based within our network. And there were some interesting results. So 41% in America, 30% Europe, and 28% in APAC. Now, if you look at APAC, which I'll focus on just because we're in Singapore, 52% um, of all the developers in APAC, their audience was in that region. 27% in the US, 8% in Europe, 13% across South America. So naturally, for someone that probably doesn't necessarily understand the advertising industry that well, because it's new to them, you'd probably immediately assume that you need to focus on that 52%, because over half your audience is in the APAC region. So let's work our advertising around those users. But if you look at these three regions, they're all very, at a very different stage in their kind of growth within the advertising industry. So America, obviously, way ahead of the other markets. A huge industry. It's probably where the, a massive chunk of the trillion dollars, I think, that the industry is going to be worth this year is coming from. Then EMEA, then APAC. So whilst 27% of your audience is in the US, it's probably going to drive maybe 60%, 70% of your ad revenue. So when you're planning and looking at location, really kind of think about, okay, just because my users are here doesn't necessarily mean that's where the revenue is. So let's try and find those revenue pockets and then work my advertising, whether it be app placement or whatever it is, around where the dollars are. Understand, again, as I said earlier, what the market wants, and then plan those ad placements around that market so you get all the dollars you can possibly access, which then brings in better user experience and, and better brand and quality of advertising. So quick example of this. Um, everyone familiar with four picks, one word? Anyone played it? No? You should. It's a great game. Um, company based in Germany. Uh, called Lotum Labs, did four picks, one word, uh, I think over 120 million downloads they had globally. But actually a huge amount of their audience was in France and Germany. So I just wanted to pick this out because we were working with them, they had kind of banner ads running at the bottom of the page and it looked okay, it wasn't really driving that much revenue. We kind of taught them a little bit about their core markets. For instance, I'm going to use France as an example. Um, France, out, French brands, only really buying interstitial and video. I'd probably say about 75% of brand revenue is going into interstitial placements. So in this particular market that was driving a lot of volume, he put those in. We've got a nice little user experience here with the game ending, quick um, interstitial, little option to manage user experience with upgrading so you can still generate some incremental revenue outside of advertising if, you, if the user doesn't want it, then straight back into the game. And the same goes here for video. Nice 15 second video ad that you can opt out of after seven seconds straight back into the game. Because he's done that and learned the market, they're driving, I would probably say, about 320% revenue higher than they did on standard banners. So just something worth thinking about with regard to the markets and understanding those markets based on the regions that um, your games are, uh, are in. So that, again, brings me on to rule number three. I think I've mentioned it a few times already, ad placement. Um, probably the most basic but most crucial, I think. This isn't really something you can think about after you've developed. Um, I actually, previously, before I joined Millennial, was working for a, a game development company for, for five years. And one thing that used to really annoy us, I hate to use the word annoy, is people would always treat advertising as a, a kind of second pot. Right? Let's get the game out first, and then let's load ad in, ads in as a, 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 the next solution. The problem is, to get it right, you have to start thinking about ad placement when you're developing the game. Like when you're starting to put the pages in, where does the ad sit? Is it going to be in the game environment? Is it going to be outside? So when you're building the app, really try and plan that ad placement in when you're doing it, and it will definitely benefit a much better user experience. I think being in the mobile industry now for let me, four or five years, we've seen some horrendous ad placements. Because back in the day, it was all about clicks. Clicks, clicks, clicks would get you dollars, dollars, dollars. It doesn't really do that anymore. A click doesn't necessarily transition into dollars, because companies like us have huge tech teams, and we're optimizing daily with campaigns. And if we see false clicks coming through that aren't converting. Advertisers now looking for conversion rates, looking to track in app purchase after someone's clicked on an ad. We track that, and if we're not getting it from a specific environment from that click, we'll just take those ads out and just serve them elsewhere where we're getting better performance. So ad placement is, is absolutely key. Um, 
better the ad placement, better quality ads we can build in, stronger revenue. Number four, programmatic. Um, anyone know what programmatic means? Is that all pretty new? Excellent, one person, fantastic. So I wanted to bring programmatic in because it's actually a buzzword in the industry right now. Um, everyone's talking about it, apparently this is the year of programmatic. Um, and I'll go into a little bit more detail about what it means. But it's effectively having one partner that can access every other partnership for you that's within the mobile advertising space, whether it be ad networks, direct advertisers, um, demand side platforms, etc. So right now, just to give you an idea of how much that industry is worth, before I show you a kind of rough overview of how it looks like, it's about 4.6 billion we'll spend through programmatic um, this year. Um, this is just mobile. And already 20% of advertisers are buying through this type of tool, where it's almost a, a a digital machine talking to another digital machine to get the performance they need from adverts. That's pretty much it. That's the simplest term I could put it. So the easiest way I can probably lay this out to you is with this graph. So this right here is all of your ad infantry. You have that one kind of programmatic kind of SSP type platform that powers everything else you do. And it kind of fits into four slots. So you have the option to run direct sales campaigns. So if you do decide, depending on the size of your business, that you want to build out um, your own sales team, go out to agencies, pitch for that entertainment budget, whatever it is, you can run all of that through these kind of platforms yourselves before you start talking to any other third parties. After that, whoever's powering it, obviously I'm using our example, not somebody else's naturally, uh, but whoever's powering that, you then get access to 100% of their revenue through that platform, which is great. If it's a Google, Apple, Millennial, you're pretty much looking at 70% you know, of the of the market. You then have the most important bit, which is what I was talking about in slide one, about really trying to create the true value of your infantry, which is the exchange piece. So the exchange piece, and forgive me if this isn't making sense, um, get a bit conscious that I work in the industry, so this is all kind of normal. Um, but you can access multiple different lines that you would never be able to access through a standard network or directly, which is agency trading desks, it's demand side platforms on mobile and also online demand side platforms that are trying to get into the mobile space, as well as kind of smaller ad networks that might be able to bring some revenue to you, but the revenue potential isn't quite strong enough for you to start having to load in another SDK among the other 20 you've probably all got plugged in that you have to continually update as, as they need them updated. You then have the final piece, which is mediation. So I've used Google and, uh, and Apple as an example, two big players in the market for mobile ad spend. You've kind of got that as your, your full short. But in an ideal world, you shouldn't need to have to rely on these kind of core mediated networks if everything above it is working well and the points I've discussed before are all in place, i.e. ad placement and, and so on. So hopefully that makes a little bit of sense, but for me as any developer sitting out there that's developing a game right now that's going to build scale, platforms are probably the most important thing that you should look for that have an exchange. If it doesn't have an exchange, it's not worth looking at because that's where the kind of new incremental dollars in the market are really coming in and we're pulling that away from print, from online, from TV, into mobile. It's really, really important. That brings me on to number five. Continue to grow your user base. Um, obviously, pretty bold statement. Um, I think with anyone that's generating revenue, and we actually advise people to do this a lot, if we can generate you strong revenue, you should always take a percentage of that and reinvest it back into the platform or the network that you're working with. Um, purely on the basis that those users are going to get potentially bored because they've played it too much, they're going to go somewhere else. Um, so a quick example that I just wanted to pull up here was something we found with uh, Pet Rescue. Um, this is a great example of where they're using a platform or a tool to actually serve their own house ads and cross-promote and sustain their users across another game that they've just generated without having to lose them to a competitor. And it works really well. So you know, something you should definitely focus on Obviously, that's more advertising on focusing on monetization, but definitely rule number five. And then my, my final rule is less is more. Um, what I mean by that is kind of more quality over quantity. Time and time again, we've seen developers generate, you know, three, four, five billion impressions a month on mobile. And straight away, you think, wow, I've got all these impressions that are going to make a, a hell of a lot of money. But if the ad placement's not right, you haven't got the right platform in place, um, the user experience isn't great, you're not actually going to make that much money from that kind of volume without kind of accessing that brand revenue and, and where the kind of more CPM driven dollars are. So our advice is 
is definitely to, um, to look at quality, um, good, strong ad placement, manage user experience. And you'll probably find you could do 25% less traffic rather than focusing on volume and actually make 50% more revenue if, if everything is done right. A good example of this is Kalu Games. Everyone familiar with Subway Surfers? Yeah, good. Um, great game, I mean, just huge. Um, they've actually managed kind of user experience in advertising really well, I think. And for those of you that haven't actually gone in and really studied the advertising, you, you definitely should. I think for probably the first week, or maybe a certain amount of game plays, you don't actually see any advertising at all. Obviously, it's all about pushing just um, in-app purchase. But everyone knows if, if a user's not going to purchase in-app within a set period of time, they're probably never going to purchase at all. So the only option you really have is advertising. So what they do is they wait to track that, and then as soon as users decide they're not going to spend in-app, they start serving them ads. But they found a really nice placement. So as soon as you finish a free run, you've been hit by a train, or you run into a train, you get a really nice interstitial after the exit page as you go back to the game. They've created their own native ad, so it's still seamless in the background, as in kind of transparent, so you can still see the game. It performs extremely well, and I, I know for a fact they generate a huge amount of revenue off of that, but it's just one ad placement in the whole game. That's it. There's no banners on the home page, nothing, just one simple interstitial, and it works really well. So I think that's a um, pretty good example. So they're my six rules. Um, just to recap, market value pricing, use exchanges and just knowledge of the market to really try and understand the true value of your infantry when you're um, developing, and do this at development stage rather than afterwards. Um, look at where the dollars are for you. Look at core markets. What are those core markets? Um, speak to companies like us and our com you know, competitors that you might be working with and really understand how they can help you build in stronger revenue within those markets and give you an understanding of what you need. Again, around ad placement, embrace programmatic. The platform, like I said, is probably the most important piece. Without that, you're going to probably lose next year about 30, 40% of the potential revenue in the market globally. Um, without having that in place. Um, brings me to continue growing your user base, as always, and less is more. Quality, not quantity, is definitely the way forward. Better ad performance, better brands, equaling better user experience. So just to finish off, I just put a little something in here, a little bit silly. Um, but my view is if you get all of this right and everything works, people are going to be so engaged in the advertising within your game that we'll probably see a little bit more of this. I had to put it in there, sorry. Just a nice little, uh, nice little finish off. Um, so hopefully that's useful. I've just tried to keep it really simple, very basic, um, because I think a lot of people miss the basics when it comes to mobile advertising. And if you haven't got them in place, everything else is pretty much redundant. And that's it. Any questions? Uh, so you talked about uh, you know, having different ad placement for markets. You, know, like you gave an example of France. And uh, the advertisers over there love interstitials, but then as a developer, how would they know about these kind of information? Like which market, uh, in which, you know, what kind of formats are popular in which market? Yeah, good question. I think it depends on the size of your business. Um, if you're a big global business um, that's getting into mobile for the first time, you're probably very in touch with agencies and advertisers directly through previous campaigns. Great to speak to them because you'll understand what those individual brands want. I think the only way as a, a developer starting up or a mid-sized business is speaking with the advertising partners. Like We're really not that scary, um, especially from our side of the business. All we're interested in is just making you guys more money. That's it. Like My team's job is just to spend money. Um, so we would be sitting there to give you guys advice on you know, which markets, who's spending, um, the ad placement. We're probably the best people to speak to. Not just millennials, but just, just generally the, the people in the industry that are actually supplying the ads and supplying the revenue, for sure. Answer your question? Good? Perfect.